of Jesus when we're baptized also. So how many know that Jesus is everything? Come on, the sooner that we grab a hold of that, Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, Jesus when the sun goes down. You can never have too much Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we, we saw last week, you know, what, what can the name of Jesus do for you? Have you ever wanted somebody to do something for you? Anybody here? Ever, come on. Have you ever asked somebody to do something for you? Okay. Now, what can the name of Jesus do for us? We saw last week it can save us. It says in Acts, there's no other name under heaven in which man must be saved. No other name. You cannot be saved by Allah, Muhammad. I mean, whoever you think you put your trust in. These, the, see, the thing about Jesus, Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus has been highly exalted because he was obedient, even obedience to death, upon a cross. If you look at Philippians, it, it, it talks about that. He's been given a name above every name. Okay? Above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to the glory of God. He's, he, he's been highly exalted. He's at the right hand of the Father. That's a place of authority. There's no greater authority than Jesus because the Father has given him that authority to be judge of the living and the dead. See, there's nobody else who's going to judge us. I mean, people can judge you, but as far as being the truth or the reality, Jesus is the judge. And I'm glad that I'm going to be judged by Jesus, not you all. <laughs> Because when I see Jesus, I have strong confidence or I have hope in him that his truth will not fail me. His mercy will not fail me. His loving kindness will not fail me. How many know this, this morning you got up? That's a great revelation. It's deep. <laughs> But something that you may not realize, his mercy is new every morning. Amen. How many know that mercy triumphs over judgment? Yes. See, it's better for us to show mercy than to show judgment. And if, if, if we get that down in us, <laughs> then we become like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is above every name. You know, if you want to write down these scriptures, you can look it up. But in Philippians 2, 9 through 11, it talks about his name above, is above every name. He's number one. Also in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 4, it, 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 it talks about that Jesus has been given a more excellent name than any of the angels. And it's like the Bible talks about angels are more powerful than us. Did you know that? There are angels. There are different kinds of angels. But even when there was something that was brought up against the devil, they always use it, the, the name of Jesus. They always referred to the Lord. They didn't refer to their own might or their own power, but they referred to Jesus. I'm telling you what, Jesus is everything. But if you don't know what to do, What's that song say? Just say, Jesus. Just say Jesus. They're going to be there at the light show, right? Yeah. Yes, they will. Yeah. That'd be seven times down. Seven times down. Hallelujah. When you don't know what to do, anybody ever been there? Ah, Jesus. Jesus. See, the angels understand to know. To use the name of Jesus. So the name of Jesus. You know what can the name of Jesus do? It can save us. Because understand this. The name represents the person. 
Now we're having a baptism today, but you're not being baptized in the Larry. <laughs> there, there's, there's no power in the name of Larry. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But, but to think, when you're baptized into something, it means you're immersed or submerged. I mean, you're under. Come on, you're under. You're, 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 you're don't. I mean, submersed in, in, into Jesus. And see, when you, you know, it talks about that when you were baptized into somebody's name, you were, you belong to that person. That you were a part now of, of, of that person's family. How many know it's good to be a part of the family of God? It's good to be baptized not only in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but also in the name of Jesus. And the reason why, which we're going to see here about the name of Jesus, it actually, how many know that, that the people, the religious people, were always trying to trap Jesus or trying to get him to, well, he makes himself equal with God. So they didn't have a problem with the Father. They didn't have a problem with, with, with Yahweh, with Jehovah. You know, they had a problem with Jesus making himself the Son of God. If you look in the scriptures, you'll, you'll, you'll see that's, you know what, that's what actually got him crucified. But how many know that was God's plan? But it says that the Father has given to Jesus all authority. In heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. See, there's no greater name than Jesus. So to be baptized in Jesus' name, what you're saying publicly, you belong to Jesus. You belong to the family of God. The family of Jesus. Hallelujah. I know I got a, a brother-in-law, John, that he's, he's, he's thankful to, to be in our family. <laughs> he, he has said that. He has said that out of his mouth, so I can say that. That's not a lie. That's the truth. <laughs> but, you know, being a part of a family, being a part of, of what the family of God. I mean, church, do you understand when we gather each time together, we're a part of the family of God. Our names are written in heaven. We are citizenship of heaven. We're still here on the earth for a reason, for a purpose. Have you ever, if you've ever thought, I don't know what my reason or purpose is, it's to be a part of the family of God. It's about being able to let your light shine before men that they might glorify your heavenly Father. How I many know that's what Jesus was all about? Was doing the will of his Father. What I see my Father say, that's what I say. What I see my Father do, that's what I do. And if you look at Hebrews, it says he, will, he is the express image of of his father. Chip off the old block. How many here you want when people see you, you want them to see Jesus? Come on. I mean, as a Christian, that should be our heart's cry. Lord, when 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 they when people see me or hear me, I I, I want them to see you. I want them, I want to be fully immersed in the things of God. Hallelujah. We also talked about an inheritance in Acts chapter, uh, where's it at? It's Acts 26, 18, when, 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 when Saul had that experience on the Damascus road. And, and he says, now get up, I'm going to send you to open their eyes, people's eyes, from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. And then it talks about that I want you to give them an inheritance through faith in me. Now, we said last week an inheritance is what? Just, what do you think? When, when you inherit something, it's what? It's yours. It, 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 it belongs to you. It means it's a gift, a portion of the estate, an allotment. You know, what is yours? It's like in a will, when somebody dies, if your name's in the will, you get what's on the will. Amen? See, Jesus died. 
He had a will for each and every one of us, an inheritance. How many here in the natural, if your name's on a will, and you, oh, I see $500,000, you know, $500,000, that's mine. Would you just, oh, well, I'll just let them have it. You know, it's, it's only $500,000. It's, it's, you know what, they can have it. You would be doing everything you possibly can. That's mine. You're not getting what's mine. That belongs to me. I'm getting what my, my name's on that. That's mine. And we saw last week that by the stripes upon Jesus' back, the blows that cut, you were what? Healed. Now that's past it. So that's that's in our inheritance. Part the, if you look at salvation that is found in Jesus, it's it's for our healing and our health. Oh, well, I just don't understand that. I just don't know if I believe that. See, what you're saying when you don't believe something, uh, just they can have it. Whoever can have it. But to understand that Jesus took those blows for our healing, for our health, then it talks about our safety, our security, our deliverance. Come on. Sometimes we think salvation is, well, we got our ticket to heaven. We got it punched. But he, he talks about our life here on the earth. How many know that Jesus is interested in our life here on the earth? Okay. That word salvation is all inclusive. It's talking about these things. Our soundness. How many know the world is filled with mental illness? How many know that even you and I can be oppressed by the devil if we let him? Have you ever had thoughts run through your mind? You think, oh my goodness, I can't take this. Come on. Circumstances we may face and it's just like, Everything begins with the thought, but it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for pulling down vain imaginations in every stronghold, bringing everything into obedience to Christ Jesus. So you can't stay. You can't be in my mind. You can't be in my thoughts. In the name of Jesus, I pull you down. Some of us are just stroking that thing. You're a nice kitty. <laughs> You're always around. I can count on you. Count on what? To have no peace? To be in turmoil? To be frustrated? To be aggravated? To be agitated? All the aches. <laughs> Whatever it might be that's trying to, to, to get at you. Jesus paid a great price. Our inheritance. But you've got to believe it. See, that's where it becomes all things become possible when you believe. When you don't believe it. I just don't believe that, Pastor. That's who I am. Okay. Jesus paid a great price for your salvation. And it belongs to you, but if you don't want it, I'll take it. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, I see I got to get moving here. In Matthew 28, 19, and we're going to look about the name of Jesus in water baptism here. Now, I'm going to start off here because I want us to see that he said to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So he's saying here to his apostles, hey, I want you guys to go out and, and baptize people, you know, because baptism, water baptism is the next step in obedience. It's, it's publicly confessing to the world, to those around you, whether it's, it's church family, whether it's family family, of that something has taken place inwardly. That you have received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And you want to be water baptized because it is, as it is said, it's like a being buried, immersed, identifying with Jesus. 
And then you come up out of that water. You know what? You, you belong to him. You're alive in Jesus. Come on. If any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold. That word behold means like, behold. All things are made brand new. See, to have the life of God on the inside of us, to be immersed, you know, buried our sins, all of our shortcomings in that and brought up out of that, and you're brand new, washed, cleansed in the family of God. I identify with Jesus. All right. Acts chapter 2 of verse 38. Now this here, he's, if, if, if you look at the whole context, he, he's, he's talking, he's preaching Jesus to them. And, and then, then they say, what must we do to be saved? Have you ever given thought to that? What must you do to be saved? Believing. This is what Peter said. Peter said to them, repent. Now the word repent here means to change your mind. How many know that the Lord wants to change our mind, our soul, our will, our emotions? The word repent means if I'm going in this direction, then I'm turning around about face. Now I'm going this direction. I'm going to walk with Jesus now. You know, my life was once going this way. Because he's talking about you crucified the Lord of glory. But you did it in your ignorance. How many know that when you do sin, you people do it in their ignorance? Oh, I didn't know I was doing that. But when you get that reality and, and, and you see what, you know what, Lord, I'm not happy with how my life's going. It's like it's going nowhere. You know, I need to be saved. I need to be baptized. I need to get immersed into the things of Jesus. He says to repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. How many know that the Holy Spirit is part of our inheritance? Yes. If you read in the book of Ephesians, it, it, it says that the Holy Spirit is, is our guarantee of things to come. Yes. Hallelujah. Anybody like a guarantee on things? You know, can you guarantee me that? See, he's given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. How many know the Holy Spirit knows the deep things of the Father, of, of the Lord Jesus? Jesus said, I want you to wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. Until you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, there's more than one baptism. What we're going to do today is the baptism in water. But it talks about being baptized into Christ. When a person gets born again, supernaturally, you're born into God. That your spirit man becomes alive into God. But there's also being receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, some people want to leave that out. They would just love to take the book of Acts and just cut it out. How many know the book of Acts is the word of God? Now, I love what Paul said. He said, I, I, I have not shunned or avoided teaching you the whole counsel of God. And if you look at the writings that, you know, the Apostle Paul wrote like 14 of the books that we have, Philippians, Colossians, Ephesians, you know, 14 books. And if you read some of his writings in, in Corinthians, he, he reveals about the Holy Spirit. You can't just throw that out. You can't just leave that out and think that you're going to have the whole counsel of God. All right, that was for somebody. <laughs> but we saw there that they were baptized in the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 8, 14 through 19. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God and sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as of yet he had fallen upon none of them, they had only been baptized, what? In the name of the Lord Jesus. So I'm, I'm, I'm letting you see that he says to go into all the world and baptize. That, that, that means make new followers. You know, what happened when they heard there in Acts chapter 2 that, that they repented and 
3,000 souls were saved that day. 3,000 souls repented and believed on the Lord Jesus and they were baptized. 3,000 people. That's a lot of people to baptize in water. I'd like to have the chance to do that. Listen to me, I'd love to have a chance to do that. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10, 47 and 48. Now, I'm, I'm just making a point here about being baptized in the name of Jesus. I see I got five minutes. So, I'm bringing it in for a landing. If, if you've flown in a plane, you get up to a certain end. So at this time, we're descending. Back to your seats. and This is when Cornelius and his family and his friends got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were Gentiles. They wasn't Jewish. And they were all amazed that God would save heathens. See, that's what God's plan was from the very beginning. To save the world. Jesus didn't come into the world to, to condemn the world. He came into the world to save the world. This is the condemnation that men love darkness more than the light. And they won't come to the light. I'm telling you what, come to the light. Jesus is the light. He says, can anyone forbid water that they should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Now, in the name of the Lord was the name of Jesus. This very last one here in Acts chapter 19, 1 through 7, it says this. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples... He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard that, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then it says they laid hands. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. See, you can't leave that out. You can't leave the Holy Spirit out of what Jesus is trying to do in the earth today. You know, water baptism is the next step in obedience. See, well, what qualifies a person to be baptized? I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Acts chapter 8, 34 through 38, because this qualifies you. Okay, it's not, well, you got to take a, you know, a 30-day test and, you know, you got to come in here. No, this is what it says. This is about Philip and saw the eunuch and he's, he's reading it out of the book of Isaiah. And it says that he was like led you know, to the slaughter like a lamb, and he opened not his mouth. And, and so Philip runs up there and says, you know, what are you reading? You know, do you understand what you're reading? He says, I don't know if the prop, this book here, the prophet Isaiah is talking about himself or somebody else. And it says from that, then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at that scripture, preached Jesus to him. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And you know what Philip did? He baptized him. 
So this, this is what's required. You must believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Son of God. If you believe that, you're a candidate for water baptism. Amen. Amen. So if you're there and you've never been water baptized, I just encourage you to get water baptized. Take the next step of obedience. Remember when Jesus was baptized, they, oh, you know, John, oh, no, 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 I'm not worthy. You know, it's like, you know, G Jesus said it's to fulfill all righteousness. So I just encourage you today as we're fellowshipping and as those that have signed up to be water baptized, come on, we're, we're watching them to arise. Come on with an anointing from Jesus. Yes. Some of you get it. Some of you are like, oh. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you, you've, you've heard all that we need to do to get there. So I'm going to have you stand up. I'm, I'm not too far off the mark here, but... <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you get something this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, that, that we'll just carry on and, 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 and do, Father, obedience, the next step in what you have for us to do in, in life. And Lord, we, th we thank you for not blessing just us, but our, our children and their children. Father God, that, that is your desire. And Father, we just ask that as we leave this place this morning, Father God, that we'll all get there safely. Father, that we'll have a good time in Jesus, a good fellowship, and a good baptism service. Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.